untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a teamer colored combo deck built around a Grinning Ignis, a 3 mana 2 2 elemental, can pay a red mana and return it from the battlefield back to our hand, adding double colorless and a red mana to our mana pool. So we can potentially use that mana to replay the very same Ignis that we just picked up, but by itself it doesn't really accomplish anything and also costs us one red mana for each iteration of this loop. So that's where we need some other cards to combo with it, and one of them is a Burgi, God of Storytelling a 3-3 legendary god, saying whenever we cast any spell, add red mana to our mana pool. So now if we have a Burgi in play and cast Greening Ignis, we can use the red mana from Burgi to activate Ignis, pick it back up, replay it, and basically cast it over and over again. Now by itself, once again, this doesn't accomplish anything, but we've got a ton of cards to combo with this particular synergy, one of those being a Devilish Valet, a 1-3 Trample Haste, with Alliance saying whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, double Devilish Valet's power until end of turn. So now if we can infinitely replay our Grinning Ignis, we can infinitely increase the Devilish Valet's power and kill the opponent from any life total. And then we also have a one-off copy of Witty Roastmaster, a 3-2 with Alliance this time saying whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control, the Roastmaster deals one damage to each opponent. So now we don't even have to attack to deal infinite damage to our opponent, which can be useful if they're maybe holding a Wandering Emperor to exile a tapped creature. And then our final win condition needs a little bit more help than just the Ignus plus Burgi combo, and that is a Banefire, actually needs us to generate infinite mana, but we've got a lot of ways to get there, either if we have a Steamkin alongside the Burgi plus Ignus combo, getting a plus one counter whenever we cast a red spell, and we can remove three plus one counters to add triple red to our mana pool, so this way if we're comboing with Burgi and Ignus, we'll eventually remove three counters from Steamkin, adding triple red, which will generate mana with each iteration of the loop essentially, and then eventually cast a Banefire for X equals the opponent's life total and wouldn't be able to be countered or prevented. And then we also have another way to get the infinite mana if we have a Hazard's Monument, which discounts our red creature spells by one. So now if we cast Ignis, it's only going to cost us two mana, essentially netting us one extra mana for each iteration, which will also eventually generate infinite mana for a Banefire. There's also other combinations that can let us combo. Let's say we have a Steamkin and a Monument, then we can also get there with Ignis if we have enough red mana to start out. So we don't necessarily need Burgi as part of the combo. So that's the beauty of this deck, is that there's a ton of redundancy. And then a cherry on top here is access to Risen Reef as a 1-1 elemental that can generate a ton of value if another elemental enters battlefield under our control. And as it happens, Grinning Ignis is also an elemental. So if we play it, we also get to trigger Risen Reef, potentially putting more lands in play and drawing extra cards, which can also draw us into our win condition. And then finally Hazard's Monument is another way to eventually draw into our win condition if we've got the Ignis plus Burgi combo, because whenever we cast a creature spell we may discard a card, and if we do draw a card, so we can eventually draw into our win condition after making infinite mana. So those are all ways to combo kill our opponent, and then to tie everything together we've got a bit of early mana acceleration with four copies of the new Elvish Mystic from Explore Anthology and three Three copies of Alenor Elves, and then we also have two copies of Prosperous Innkeeper, which can also potentially be part of the combo. Instead of dealing infinite damage, this can gain infinite life, but also just makes a treasure when it enters to help us ramp. And then two copies of Florahedron, also an elemental to potentially synergize with our Risen Reef. And all these early ramp creatures can help us set up an early collected company. And as you can see, we've got a ton of valuable three mana creatures to find with company, including Burgi, Ignis, and some of our win conditions, as well as Risen Reef to just generate a ton of value. And then to top things off, we also have Gigantha as our companion, which happens to be an elemental, so it can also synergize with Risen Reef, and just a nice way to potentially spend our mana. There's even situations where we might end up empty-handed, but we can still put the companion in our hand after making infinite mana, and then eventually start discarding again with our Hazard's Monument to draw into our win condition, so that can also come up. So just a very interesting combo deck, but it does heavily revolve around Grinning Ignis, so that's the key card we pretty much want access to in every game. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Gigantha's companion, and our hand's got double Ignis, which is our most important card, can combo with Risen Reef. So we're missing maybe a monument, a Burgi, or something like a uh, Steamkin could also help. On the play as well. 
So we'll see what we're up against here. Turn one Swamp. Don't want to see Fatal Push since we have a lot of 3-drops. Thoughtseize would have been less annoying. But we found a Monument, so that helps. And our opponent appears to be a Sacrifice deck. Okay, so at least our Monument should be safe from removal. And we should have time to play a slightly longer game as our opponent's not going to kill us out of nowhere here. Maybe extract some value from Risen Reef, hit our land drops, and at some point combo with Ignis. Alright, Thoughtseize probably takes one of them, but our hand's pretty stacked here. As Risen Reef is kind of its own value engine they need to deal with. So one Ignis gone. And a Cauldron Familiar missing its oven. Alright, let's play Risen Reef. And then we can play Ignis with Reef in play to extract more value. Get rid of Mystic. Would rather just hit land drops naturally. As they're less susceptible to removal. And a Florahedron still an elemental, so we can potentially play it to trigger Risen Reef. So I'll just go for a tapped stomping ground here. And yeah, next turn we could potentially combo off with a right draw. It's gonna be a deadly dispute sacking the cats. So our opponent can get the anvil going by sacking the treasure. And they're probably looking for more hand disruption. Fatal push can also kill Ignis at instant speed if they have a treasure token to enable revolt. So that's a concern. We actually found Burgi, but maybe the play here is get value from Risen Reef and then wait for them to use removal on Reef to then combo with Burgi and Ignis afterwards. So they might have to kill the Reef that's in play. Do I still want Florahedron? If we hit an untapped land, it would be nice to have. So I think I decline, and then if we don't hit an untapped land with the Risen Reef triggers, we can always play Florahedron. Now sadly that one's tapped, so we'll put it in play. And there we go, so decline. Then I can play this normally and play Florahedron. And get a ton of Reef value. Happy with both cards in hand. And we don't even have to worry about a Meat Hook Massacre in our future, since our opponent's playing Gigantha, so no double black cards in their deck. I guess a Mayhem Devil could be bad with all those artifacts to sacrifice and potentially deal damage. And yeah, there it is. So that could still potentially disrupt our combo. But they also need to deal with Risen Reef to an extent. Ooh, another Mayhem Devil. So yeah, that's gonna pretty much wipe our board. But that should leave our opponents out of cards to sacrifice, so Ignis plus Burgi should seal the deal. So play Burgi. And then we can start digging for a win condition. Bone stepped out, so... There we go, Davilish Valley. Can play that. No removal to worry about. Pick up Ignis and make an infinitely powered Davilish Valley to close out the game. Could throw a Gigantha in the mix as well if we'd like. Another elemental for Risen Reef as well, in case that comes up. Points at 18, so need to make sure we're around 30 power once we factor in Mayhem Devil's toughness as well. So one more should do it, but we could keep going if we really wanted to.
Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Missing red mana. Although we do have Monument plus Burgi. So just missing our Ignus, which we can maybe find with a Collected Company. So while it might be a little bit slow on the draw, I'm still gonna give it a shot. And Innkeeper's nice to see. Opponent mono black so far. Could go for Florahedron. Although if I expect it to get removed, might be better off going Innkeeper and then next turn we can either company or maybe like get a monument down. Or get some card advantage from Risen Reef, which is also reason to play Florahedron later. Opponent had the fatal push. So that worked out. So they might be red-black mid-range, or I guess black-green. Trespasser eats Ring Keeper, that's alright. And we found red mana. So, have quite a few options. Including playing monuments, which is unlikely to get removed by the opponent, but not impossible. Would help us potentially double or triple spell in future turns. Or we can just pass with a plan of casting a collected company. Although if we find a Grinning Ignus, we're not necessarily capable of comboing off right away. So I'm kind of liking the Hazard's Monument here. Ooh, Assassin's Trophy to take it out. Should have a basic left. So if they have another trophy, we already ran out of basics as we drew two of them. So now is the time for company, or do I maybe try and play Risen Reef plus uh, Florahedron just to get some nice value here since this appears to be a grindy matchup, although I could regret it if her opponent finds a thought seize to take away Collect's company, but this seems pretty decent. And a Steamkin. Do I want to play Lan or Elves? Not necessarily. Could also be a sweeper in our future, like a Meat Hook Massacre. A reason not to overextend. Elder Gergroth, alright. So our points tapped out. And we may be able to combo off here. So step one is to play Burgi. And then we can follow it up with a Collected Company. Could also try and play Horn if we think we're gonna need the extra card draw engine, which is certainly reasonable. Could also play a Steamkin first, which also triggers Risen Reef, so that's just good value. Yeah, let's try this approach Steamkin and then maybe Collected Company, and then if Company hits Burgi, we can play this as Horn instead. Another Risen Reef is nice too. So, we can Risen Reef. Although, can only play company if I hit a land that I can put in my hand and then play untapped. Which is still very much possible. So I'll try it. Elves and Ignis. Alright, so no land, but we have all the combo pieces we need now to combo next turn. So that's alright. Do I want to play... Burgi, or just keep it in hand for next turn. Plain Elves, hope there's no Sweeper next turn. Could play another Elves as well. Don't think it matters too much. Because even with a Sweeper, I might be able to still get there next turn. Can play Burgi, play Ignus, and then still have some leftover mana to keep comboing. Garagroth probably gonna draw. And then if I take 9, I shouldn't be in any immediate danger of dying. Although I could jump with an Elves if I wanted to. It 
It's gonna be a Sorin. That's fine. They might have a fatal push for one mana, but that's not gonna interact with our combo. As they wouldn't have a revolt enabled, and a backup grinning Ignis is nice to have. Alright, so let's get this party started. Play Burgi. Play Ignis. And then Risen Reef is gonna draw us into our win condition. Monument could also help. Or we can cast a whole bunch of collected companies. And sooner or later we'll find either a Devilish Valet or maybe a Banefire. There we go. And our opponent concedes. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand has potential, especially with double company. Facing Speaker of the Heavens, an Angel Life Gain deck, which should be a winnable matchup. They typically don't have a ton of interaction, and while they can present a very scary board pretty quickly, we might be able to combo them off before they present lethal. So next turn might go for Hazard's Monuments, and then we can play Burgi and Steamkin, and there's Grinning Ignis as well. So yeah, let's play Monument first, hope there's no Skyclave Apparition, and then we should be in great shape to start comboing. It's gonna be a Selfless Savior, and a Youthful Valkyrie, that's fine. So opponent not quite able to activate Speaker yet. Okay, so step one might be to play Burgi. A loot with monuments, and then could even discard Collected Company here to try and find a land. Elf means I can still cast it, make a red mana, and loot again, getting rid of another Elvish Mystic. Hope to find a land. Found a Banefire. So. I can play Steamkin and still hoping to find a land, so I'll get rid of company. Because if we find a land we can play Ignus and then combo off, and we've got a Banefire already. Alright, there we go. So color doesn't matter here. Play Ignus. And I don't need to loot with monuments. Steamkin means we can actually generate extra mana. Although we could also try and dig for a Devilish Valet, which may actually be faster than going through the Ignis combo with Banefire, but Steamkin's gonna speed up the process significantly. Okay, pick this back up. Rinse and repeat. And we can draw through our entire deck if we'd like to find the Devilish Valley. But we'll go with the Banefire kill here. Okay. This is a part of the deck that could be significantly sped up in paper as opposed to digital play. But that's the case for a lot of these pseudo-infinite combos. Opponent's at 26, so we have to go through the loop a few extra times. But at least we've got both Burgi and Monuments to net us more mana alongside Steamkin. So it's actually going pretty quickly, already up to about 50 mana. We'll do it once more until Steamkin gets a third counter, and then we should be good to go. Max equals 26. Alright, on to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's quite promising, just missing a Grinning Ignis, pretty much. And kick things off with the Lenor Elves. Probably want to try and get Monument down as soon as possible to start digging towards our Ignis. And then plenty of ways to generate extra mana between Burgi and Steamkin. Right, opponents black green with their own elves. Play this on. Kind of interesting whether we want blue for Risen Reef or extra red. Since we might need the extra red if we want to double spell next turn. So we'll try this. Uh huh, fight rigging, so next turn they could already enable it with a Regisaur. So that's scary, especially if they have a Titan to maybe blow up our monument. So for now, I guess we could play Steamkin into Burgi or Burgi into Steamkin. If we Steamkin first, we get an extra counter. If we Burgi, we get a red mana, uh, which we don't necessarily have a way of using here. So. I guess we could go Burgi into Elvish Mystic and then still Steamkin. I guess that's maybe better. Sets us up to have more mana next turn. And then one Mystic can go. And a company is nice. Okay. And then do I want to get rid of anything? Probably fine keeping everything as is. Since we could also end up playing Horn if we don't find the Ignus with Collected Company. But plan A is definitely Company, hopefully finding Grinning Ignus, which should set us up to combo the opponent. So let's see if they can enable Fight Rigging here. It's going to be another Elves, okay, and a Shakedown Heavy. Okay, what does Fight Rigging reveal? Another Shakedown Heavy. All right, could have been worse. Innkeeper's interesting, but don't know if we really need to cast it here. I guess it could help us gain quote-unquote infinite life if we get the Ignis combo going, but if we get the Ignis, then we can just kill the opponent instead, so seems like... Just an unnecessary step. And yeah, we found Ignis and Burgi. Doesn't matter whether we take the extra Burgi or not. But yeah, we can pick up Ignis, replay it, and use Monument to find a win condition. Risen Reef could also help us draw, but not gonna have the mana to cast that one. So the easiest way is finding a Devilish Valley. Fire would also do it, and there's the Roast Master. And our opponent concedes, as they know what's up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Gigantha, and our hand has pretty much all the tools it needs. Bit of early ramp, and then Burgi, Ignis, and Valley as our win condition. So hopefully we don't face too much interaction. Now I'm not sure if we want to play Burgi on turn two already, or if we try and sneak in Innkeeper first, which can also maybe set up infinite life. Opponent red-black points towards a sacrifice deck. Well, can play Monument instead now. Still helps with our mana and less susceptible to removal. Familiar plus another tank plant. Found a backup Burgi, which is nice to have. So do I just play Burgi? I guess we could try and loot away Innkeeper in the hopes of finding a land. If we find an untapped land for Ignis, we're good to go. Yeah, sure. Since I don't want to get rid of my extra Burgi, I don't think. Alright, found another one. Alright, if we get to untap, we should be fine. Well, their opponent might have a bit of interaction here. Familiar attacking, maybe to set up Fatal Push and a potential revolt. Although they might just have a deadly dispute anyway. Yep. 
Alright, so expect probably a fatal push here at the very least. It's gonna be a claim into maybe a sacrifice effect. Another cauldron familiar will make a red. What's their plan here? Uh -huh, which is often to sank Burgi. Fair enough. And now they've got a familiar oven combo set up. All right, do we get to untap? Could still get there with an untap lanes. Risen Reef's not bad. I think we try again with Burgi here. And then don't think we can keep Reef as we cannot currently cast it anyway. Another monument, all right, so not quite working out here for us. Possible that playing Innkeeper would have worked out better, giving us that treasure, but of course we didn't know we were drawing a bunch of extra copies of Burgi. Opponent's also playing green, so maybe for the uh, five mana dragon. And now a Mayhem Devil. It's gonna represent instant speed answers to our various creatures, so our window of comboing off might have closed. Sir Point can bring back the cats, finish off Burgi. Although I guess we can still get there if they have no more interaction. If we draw land, that is. Another familiar, sure. Elvish Mystic, keeping us in suspense. Well, third time's a charm, as they say. Get rid of monuments. And find a Roastmaster, another one of our win conditions, but not what we need here. Alright, Roastmaster can go. Valley has more toughness. And a Steamkin, okay. Now what? If I play Steamkin and draw land, I could play Ignis, make infinite mana. Pretty much, but then we're going to be out of cards. So I won't have a win condition to then actually win the game with. Although, they're probably just killing Burgi once again. Although it doesn't matter. I guess I can play Steamkin, get rid of Valet, and make sure Steamkin has all the counters, and then pick up Ignis again. And that might be okay. And then we still have a Banefire to dig towards to combo off. Assuming we find the land here, which we finally did. Took us long enough. All right, so we'll do this a few times. But we're not actually making any progress, unless I guess we can put Jigantha in hand. I totally forgot about that. So we actually have one extra card, thanks to our companion, to discard at some point to Monument to start looting towards Banefire. So we had the combo all along. Okay, well, good thing we didn't just pass a turn there. How could I forget about my 8th card in hand? Okay. There we go. Get rid of Gigantha. And then, yeah, Banefire's probably our best bet at this point. Although we also have another Devilish Valley left. There's a Banefire, so we no longer need to discard anything. Just need to make some mana. Okay. Well, it was pretty scary once the Mayhem Devil came down. And at 9 life we were also just pretty close to our opponent burning us out. But the combo did not let us down. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one.
Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's relying pretty heavily on company being good. We do have double Steamkin, which can also kind of add up. So it's definitely not the best hands, but Innkeeper into company might be good enough, we'll see. Opponent on a heroic deck with turn one Hoplite. Okay. Make them play around a burn spell. And then we have to decide if we want to Innkeeper into company or Steamkin first. I'm guessing Innkeeper into company is going to be better. Opponent maybe holding on to some instants. And if one of those is Reckless Rage, we don't really mind with Innkeeper. Next turn. Could go for company, or could also go monuments into Steamkin, which is quite mana efficient. That's going to be an anger that resolves. So not the fastest start from the red-white deck. And there's Burgi. Okay. So I'm into the idea of monuments into Steamkin. And I can probably afford to get rid of the second Steamkin. Because Burgi plus Monument already makes all the mana we need if we find Ignis. But uh, I might want the extra land to cast company. And there's Grinning Ignis, perfect. So if our opponent's tapped out next turn, we should be able to just combo off. Reckless Rage is the main concern. Defiant Strike lets them draw. And we'll take four. Right, we got to untap, but our opponent does have the red mana available. And given that they haven't done much, they could easily have a Reckless Rage in hand. So how do we best play around it? We can still try and play Burgi. It's going to cost us two mana. So the only thing I can do is play Ignis afterwards. But then we would add a few counters to Steamkin. Alternatively, I can just go for Collected Company. I think I should still go Burgi plus Ignis here. And make them have it. Although they don't actually seem to be holding removal. So play Ignis. Elves can go. And our opponent explodes. Alright, they know what's incoming. No Reckless Rage. And there we have it. All right, we're on the play. Hand has potential. Turn on Elves. We'll have to play Buseju here to keep more colors available. Can set up either Steamkin or Burgi. Put it on a human tribal deck. Well, now we can Mystic plus Steamkin. Although for two mana, there's not too much removal out of the human stack for Burgi. So it should be relatively safe, and then next turn we could go straight into Collected Company anyway. And have some leftover mana, potentially. Is that better than Mystic plus Steamkin? It's definitely still a close call. But, uh, let's try it. Since we wouldn't necessarily have a place to spend our red mana unless we find Grinning Ignis. Thalia is going to make company more expensive now. So we'll have to adjust Steamkin into Elvish Mystic. I have a bunch of mana. So we can put Gigantha in hand. And hit for three. Not that we need to necessarily try and erase their deck. But you never know, we might just draw Devilish Valley or find it with company, and then the damage matters. But now we could lose Burgi to a Brutal Cathar. Right, General Kudro instead, that's fine. Take three. Okay, well, seems like it's time for Collected Company. As opposed to Gigantha. And then, yeah, hope to find... So let's say a Risen Reef plus a Greening Ignis would be ideal. Alright, Roast Master plus Risen Reef. So still missing our Ignis.
Can play a Lenor Elves. Sure. And then Gigantha also triggers Risen Reef next turn. Do I want to trade Burgi for General Kudro? Might be okay to offer. We may not need Burgi to combo off here since we already have a Steamkin. Pack leader into Luminarch Aspirants. All right. Opponent stays back, play Gigantha, and might want to leave myself with blue mana in case we find another Risen Reef. It's another Steamkin, still triggers Risen Reef, so I'll take it. And can play another elf if we'd like. Or we can keep it in hand in case I find a monument so I can discard something after casting a creature since I don't really need the extra mana. Don't think it's going to come down to us necessarily attacking with our creatures. Although you never know. At least the Roastmaster still gets in some damage as opposed to Valet, which would have been blocked by a first striking Thalia. Okay. Opponents unloading here, and now we're definitely not getting through on the ground. But we have a 5-5 to play defense with, at least. So yeah, not the most exciting hand. What's the plan here? Play Innkeeper and pass. Or I can keep it in hand again in case of a monument, which might be the better reasoning here. So, yeah, no attacks, I'll pass. Adlin is very scary. So, yeah, time is ticking. At some point our opponent's gonna start attacking and... Our house is gonna come crumbling down, although Burgi we can play as Horn of Bounty now, and that's an excellent mana sink. So let's tap some of our elves here. Despite the Thalia attacks, still worthwhile. And uh, probably should have kept that blue untapped, but we still have Gigantha to make mana with as well. So activate Horn. Get rid of a land or maybe Mystic. Found Grinning Ignis. Okay. So we can play Ignis and Innkeeper, and then we can essentially gain infinite life. So that sounds good. And then Risen Reef plus Ignis will eventually find a win condition as well. So we should have all angles covered. And I guess Rose Master also just killing the opponent here in the meantime. So we don't really need any extra win conditions. Alright, cool that we got to see a slightly different way of closing out the game. With Rose Master and Steamkin instead of Burgi. And yeah, once again our companion. Definitely coming in handy, giving us a blocker to prevent some attacks and being an elemental to dig deeper into our deck. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand has quite a bit of potential. Turn 1, Lenor Elves. Turn 2, can try and set up Burgi. Just missing, I guess, our Grinning Ignis. Could also go for Steamkin plus Tap Florahedron. Opponent on an Absalon Greasefang deck, perhaps. Okay, so they don't tend to have a lot of interaction. But uh, yeah, we do need to try and assemble our combo as soon as possible, and we're a little bit light on card draw. Could also try and set up our Horn of Bounty instead. To that end, I might want to just go Florahedron as a creature plus. Uh, Tap lands, and then next turn we can hard cast it. Sure. 
And then we can always adjust our game plan if we draw Grinning Ignis. Or maybe Collected Company, then I might be able to take a different approach. They could have access to Witherbloom Command to kill one of my mana creatures here. Just gonna be a tapped Godless Shrine and a Thoughtseize. Alright, so goodbye Bergy, I guess. Alright, Company of the Top. Grinning Ignis, wow, we actually would have had it. So, now what? Can play Steenkin. And then can play maybe a Roastmaster. And then next turn Ignis alongside Roastmaster and Steenkin to make mana could get us there. Sure. So just need them to not have removal or hand disruption. There's no vehicles in the graveyard for Grease Fang to bring back, so... Opponent passes and uh, Devilish Valet as well. Okay, so how do we do this? Play Ignis. Counter on Steamkin. Pick up Ignis. Which will give us red mana to cast it once more, and then Steamkin goes up to three counters, so that can make triple red. And then we have to be a little bit vigilant in how we spend our mana here to make sure we have enough red to keep going. So, let's see, this looks fine. Pick up Ignis. Cast it. Can pick it up once more. Grizzly Salvage taps our opponent out, so yeah, we're good to go here. And our opponent explodes, so Roastmaster gets it done, although Valet would have been there to back it up as well. Awesome. So yeah, very impressed with how our deck performed. The key card remains Grinning Ignis. Without it, it's pretty tricky to find a lethal line, but there's a ton of ways to combo with Ignis, lots of ways to generate extra mana between Burgi, Monument and Steamkin, and then a ton of card draw with both Monument and Risen Reef, Collected Company to kind of tie everything together. So pretty resilient combo deck, all things considered, and a lot of fun to play as well. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.